All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the next uh, the next project, uh, little ELISP project in our learning ELISP series. Uh, we finished ROT 13, and I hope you enjoyed that. And today we're going to set the stage for the uh, for the next little project. Um, and again, just to give you, well, let's let's jump in and say what this will be. So um, back when I was uh, programming at Goldman Sachs, uh, I, 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 I say I wasn't a software engineer because there were no software engineers back then. That term hadn't been invented. We were programmer analysts or programmers or, or you know whatever um, so uh, so back then I was um, you know, writing a lot of C code um, and it was C code for Windows um, Windows 2 actually so it was tile they they were um, they were overlapping windows but like Windows 3 was just coming out right when I was leaving Wall Street and going into teaching, and um, and that you know I was like, ooh, that looked really cool. Um, so this is really old school stuff. But in C, you had you know you would have like uh, you would maybe have a function like int um, uh, create cell uh, row in column and car star value, and then you'd have your function, and car star would be a way of doing a string in C. Or you might have something like um, car star get name, and or maybe get value, and you give it a row and a column. Uh, one of the projects I worked on uh, when I was at Goldman was a, a trading system for... Um, for Japanese warrants, so um, this they were traded on the London Exchange, but it was a Japanese product, and all of the development and support happened in New York. So go figure. Um, but um, so I wrote a little trading system, and the interface basically looked like a spreadsheet. And so I'd have rows and columns, and you know, getting values and moving things around and whatever. Um, that, that's either here or there but what i ended up wanting to do is like i want i like to document my code and so i'd have a function header like this and then what i would always do is i'd write something like this um um and uh, i forget exactly how i did it but i think it looked something like this and i'd have a create cell and have parameters and it would be like um in row now let me just go into a c mode you know i'd have like in row and then i'd have um in column and then i'd have a car star value and i'd have a little description i'd like say something about this if necessary i'd have um returns and then um, whatever it would return and this would actually be something like a cell pointer or something uh, you know and this would be you know cell pointer to a new you know whatever describe it then I have a description goes here and then I have MZ and then I'd have like some date you know like when it was and um, i would have this on the top of all of my functions or something that looks like this and then i would have some scripts that i wrote which would allow me to pull out all of my documentation i'd you know pull this all out now some of you might be thinking it's like this sounds a little familiar um this is javadoc um, and yes but remember javadoc didn't exist in 1989 um Java didn't exist in 1989, but this is what I did, and I'm betting other programmers did stuff like this as well. Um, and it became, you know, it just, uh, you know, it just worked for us. And um, I was the only person in my area that did it. But again, I, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm sure other people did it as well and came up with different variations of it. Um, now, this was, um, I was using an editor called Epsilon at the time which was um, an Emacs clone, but um, it didn't use ELISP. And um, I used Epsilon because I was working under DOS, which then ran Windows 2. Um, and there wasn't a good Emacs for DOS back then. And that was my only choice. There was like micro Emacs, which was somewhat limited and very slow. And um, but um, So I, I just did this all manually. But... When I started teaching, um, I was um, you know, uh, 
able to either use AIX, um, and then a little bit later, um, Linux became a thing, and I installed Linux in like the mid to late 90s, and uh, had been Windows free ever since, and I went to using real Emacs, and this um, was one of the first ELISP functions that, that I ever wrote was I would basically have my cursor on the line of a function I was writing and I hit the magic keys I think it was alt C and it would give me a function header block like that you know and it would pull up the parameters and the um, you know the returns and all of that and it, I think it would leave the cursor like over here um, and then I would fill in the rest afterwards um, you know kind of like um, a very customized like YA snippet and I used this for years and um, I kind of dropped it at some point. Um, I think I wasn't writing much new code after a while, and um, then then why snippets came out and other snippet solutions. And um, but this was one of the first like useful pieces of ELISP I wrote. Now I don't remember how I wrote it, uh, to be honest with you. So I created a new version, and um, the issue is. I had to be able to, or will have to be able to, identify the parts of this function, which is basically it's um, basically a return type, and then a function name, and then in parentheses, and I don't know why that's indenting. Um, not yeah, again, it's not really a big deal though. Um, and I'm just going to go back to fundamental mode for now we don't need C for this anymore. Then the function name, then the parentheses, and then this parameter, 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 whatever, close parentheses, and then an open bracket. And we have to be able to identify each of these little pieces and then form that block. And again, I don't remember how I did it back then, um, but so I did it now with regular expressions. And um, if you know regular expressions, then you probably won't get a whole lot out of the remainder of this video. But if they're new to you or you haven't used them in Emacs, um, then stick around because they're amazingly cool. Um, regular expressions, basically, um, it's like a search and replace on steroids. Um, you know, basically, it's a super powerful search and replace. It, it basically lets you search or, not, or search. Uh, search for text that matches certain patterns and then do things with it. Um, and usually people are introduced via replace, and, um, but we'll use it programmatically in some interesting way. So, so let's take a look. So Emacs has regular expressions built in to the editor and also ELISP supports it in the programming language. And um, the, um, just about every programming language supports it um, a lot of uh, like word processor supports it, things like um, Excel and Google Sheets support it. So um, it's, it's ubiquitous, but one word of warning is it's unique. Every implementation is unique and different. So if you know Emacs regular expressions and you try to work in Python, let's say, or in JavaScript regular expressions, it's going to be close, but just different enough to be really annoying. So let me give you a few examples of what you can do. So let me, let's say we have some text. Um, the two people were walking down the street. He asked if she, let's go to autofill mode, wanted some, it shouldn't have filled there. I guess the font size is messing that up. Some ice cream. He said yes, but he would have to select the shop. Okay, so we have some text. And let's say we wanted to change I don't know. Um, let's say we wanted to change the capital she over here to lowercase because we're just going to work with lowercase for the time being. So you could just replace string she with she. Okay, so regular search and replace, and that's great. But regular expressions are much more powerful. Now, Emacs has a regular expression builder. So regex builder, I think it's built in, but I don't remember. And so you see down here, I have this, um, this string. So in a regular expression, I can match she, and notice that it matches she and she, both occasions of she. And he matches all of the he's 
that we have in there. Um, and so basically at a very simple level, a regular expression will match exact text. Um, but you can also do other things with it. Like you can say, I want to match, um, let's say we have A, let's see what we have, um, A-N, but we, we want to match A-N followed by, actually that's not a, let's see if we have something in here. Um, Okay, I don't have great text for this, but um, let what well, what you can also match is you, let's say we want to match the H, but we want to match the S before the H. Okay, so that's great, and we did that. But what if we wanted to match either an S or a T before the H? And so we do that by putting the thing we want to match in square brackets, and so that's a choice. Or mi and so notice it matches up top, and notice that it's not matching the upper, you know, it's ignoring case for the match here. So this, that, the TH at the end of with, um, but maybe we don't want it to be at the end of the word, or maybe we do want it to be at the end of the word, so we can anchor it and say, it's got to be at the end of the word. Um, I thought dollar sign was the end of the word. Maybe that's not, or maybe it's the... Ah, I thought it was, and, so, and other ones... It's the end of the world, word uh, with the dollar sign. And carrot is the beginning of the word, but I guess Emacs is doing it differently. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so we might say we want a space before it. So a space, then the T or an S, and then the H. Or we might say another uh, shorthand is we can say a dot, meaning any letter. Um, so, so that's an example there uh, of something else. That's like a wild card. Or we could have, and there are tons of rules here, and I don't mean this to be an ex exhaustive regular expression tutorial. There are tons of regular expression tutorials online. There's a Reg X golf site where you, you know, it's like a little practice site where they give you things to try to do. It's to give you the flavor for this, for what we're going to need for our ELISP. Um, to give you another example, let's say we want the T to be the second letter. We can say any letter followed by a T. Um, but the, um, that's not going to be quite right because you can see the but as another little before it, so that would have to start with a space. So a space, then any letter, then the T. So you can start to see that this can start to build up interesting things. So another thing we can say is, well, we can give choices. So we could say, well, I showed you the choice with the square bracket, but you can actually have choices for patterns. Like you could say he... And in a general regular expression, the vertical bar is the or, so he or she. But um, in Emacs, um, in um, I believe we have to exp um, we have to escape it with the slash. Now it's not showing it here, so that might just be the builder. So let's see, let's come here and let's try to do a replace. Let's say we want to change all our he's and she's to they's. We can, yeah. Replace regex, which is just a built-in Emacs command, and we could say let's replace he or she. So notice there the vertical bar is the or, but I have to escape it. If I don't have the escape, it doesn't find you know because it's now it's looking for the character vertical bar, so I'm escaping it to be a special the or. And I don't want all of those. I actually want um, a space he or a space she um, to replace those. And I'm going to replace that with they. Um, and it should have been, let me undo that. Let me do that again. And it's going to be space he or space she. And that gets all of the ones we wanted. And we're going to replace it with space they, because we want the then. So that's already much more powerful than, um, you know, than just string replaced. Um, now you do have to be careful with these because notice that um, I did he and she, but you know, I had to be careful that I didn't get the 
he in the, you know, in the middle of the word. So you have to be careful. That's actually like an old issue that students have a lot. My students would always have. They'd be writing a program in, um, you know, for the AP class, and they'd do something, and then they'd realize that, oh, I made all my variables ints, but I'm doing calculations that require doubles and they would do a search and replace to change all the ints to you know they basically change all the ints to double but they'd forget that print would become for double uh you know so you, you got but with regular expressions you can actually deal with that easily so let's look at another little regular expression problem to show a little bit more of the richness of this so let's say you have a document and the document in it has You know, so some text. Um, so we've got some prices and we've got also 68.66, which we don't want, uh, which is not a price. And let's say we want to block out all the prices in here. So um, we can't just say, you know, we, we can't just say, let's just replace all of our digit, uh, like replace all the twos with an X. That's going to be awkward and annoying. But we could do something like this. We could say, let's replace the regular expression bigger and we could say we want something that starts with the dollar sign so i escape that for it to mean dollar sign and not the pattern thing and then i want zero through nine so i showed you the brackets before but if you use the dash inside of it um the dash inside of it means anything in that range you can do like zero through nine or a through z things like that and we want multiple we want at least one thing there but we want we could have as many as we want. And the way we do that in, in the regular expression is plus. And notice how Emacs is showing us nicely what this matches. Then we need the dot, but I'm not going to use the dot. I'm going to use the dot with a slash in front of it. This dot means match any character. And, um, and I want it to match specifically the dot. And then there's going to be, there's always going to be two after the decimal place. So notice that this matches all of our money, but it's not matching the 68.6. And so then we say, let's replace that with, with that. Um, and we've, you know, blocked out all of the, um, you know, all of the monies. And um, so that's, again, the type of thing you can do with regular expressions. And again, if you look up regex online or regular expressions online, um, you'll find that, um, you know, there are all sorts of special features and, you know, shortcuts, like there's a way of specifying white space, uh, there's a way of specifying, like in a lot of them, it's slash D for any digit instead of doing that zero through nine, etc. So let's do one other example, um, which is a little bit more advanced. So basically here in, you know, we, we in America, we do dates like, um, you know, 10, 15, 1975 or 3, 7, 3, 6, um, 22. And um, that's our date format where it's month slash day slash year. Um, but a more sensible format might be day month year. So let's write a regular expression to change these. And let's actually change it so we put a dash in here um, just to make it a little bit more obvious. So for a regular expression for that, we're going to have to actually identify the ten, you know, the month and the day and switch them. And for that, we use what's known as grouping. So let's do, again, let's replace the regular expression. Get bigger. And we're going to say, and this is going to get a little ugly, so what we have is month, so month is going to be 0 through 9, but then it's going to be either one of them or two of them. So we can write this in a couple of ways. One way we can do it is there's going to be a 0 through 9, but then there's going to be another 0 through 9, but that's going to be optional. The question mark means 
zero or one of whatever the previous thing was. Then we're going to say, then there's going to be the slash. And so you notice what's that's matching. That's matching both of those clauses. Then we're going to do it again because the month is going to be that zero through nine. You know, it's going to be either one or two digits. And the day is going to also be zero through nine followed by zero through nine. Oops. Zero through nine, zero through nine, optional. Another way we could have done this is this could have been one or two zero through nines, but we'd have to escape the brackets, the squiggly brackets. So this says have either one or two of the previous things. If we wanted to do, if we did this, it would be only two. And if we did this, it would be only one. Uh, and this is one or two. So we're, we're just going to leave both mechanisms in there just for the hell of it, just to you know, have them as demos. And then we're going to have the other slash. And then we're going to have zero through nine. And here we're going to say two or four again, to match either of the possibilities. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to come in here and cut this and paste it up to here just so we have it. And um, because, and, and actually, yeah, we'll, we'll paste it up to there just to have it. Um, and so that regular expression will match the date in the month slash day slash year format. But what we need to do is we have to be able to switch this part and switch with this part. And to do that, we do that with groupings. We want this to be group one and this to be group two. And the way we do that in regular expressions is by parenthesizing. And yes, regular expressions get horribly ugly and hard to read and hard to understand. Um, yeah, you just got to deal with it. They're, they're amazing, but yes, ugly. And the way we do that is with parentheses. So we put this in parentheses. And that would say that's group one, but in Emacs, I believe we need them to be with the slash in front of them. And then this is going to be group two, so this needs a parentheses in front of it. And um, group three we don't need because that's going to be, uh, well, actually, we do need group three four for that. And so we're going to put parentheses around that as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do our replace regular expression. I'm going to cut that and paste it here. And notice that it highlights both of those uh, because they're both valid dates. And so I'm going to hit enter and we're going to replace it with slash one because that's the first one. Then I'm going to put in a space dash space just to space it out. Then slash two space dash space and then actually not one and two I want two I want the second group then the space and I'm putting that extra space in there just to make room I, I wouldn't really do this for the dates then the first group and then the third group. and there we have it it switched the order and that was that so it takes a little bit of doing and a little bit of getting used to but once we get used to it um, you know they could be incredibly powerful so we're going to finish this video off, and it's getting a little long, with how we can use this, um, not in terms of ELISP yet, that'll be in the next video, um, but we're going to have a return type, then a function name, then param parameters, which will be like, like in a double B, and then an open bracket, which might be on the next slide. Well, the way we're going to do that is our regular expression is going and let, let's we're going to forget we're going to ignore the star for now you know the um the car star because that really um that only is an issue in c type languages and the languages i use um and it'll make it a little bit more um complicated oh well, maybe we'll, maybe we'll do it so our regular expression would be is we need letters we need one or more letters however many we have and then a space. And that's going to be, for that, that set of letters, and again, we're not dealing with like car star, we're not dealing with stars there. That's going to be our, um, our first group. That's, and I'll, I'll put the, um, the closer front. 
Um, that's going to be, our, and that's your, we want our first group to be here. So we just want like the end or the double or the return type. Then we get the function name. So that's going to be A through Z, but you also could have numbers in there and you can also have an underscore in there. And um, again, as many as you want. And so, and let's actually say like um, double my function in a double B. And let's, let's, let's continue, let's do this in the regex builder. And because the regex builder, oh, I think in the regex builder, I may have to do doubles. Yes, that's it. Um, so A through Z, one or more, um, I'm not sure. Let me actually come up here. Let me just clean this all up. And I am not sure why. I, um, let's build it from scratch. All right. Um, we got to start it started on the on the same one. All right. So now, then the space, then the A through Z, zero through nine, underscore. However many of these we know. That's going to be the second group. Then there's going to be a regular open parentheses. And now we're going to need the parameters. So the parameters are going to be A through Z. And I'm not going to, I'll put, come back to put the grouping through. So that's going to be the type, which is just going to be our A through Zs. And again, some languages might also have you know, other symbols in it. Um, then it's going to be followed by a space and then an identifier, which could be A through Z, lowercase, uppercase. I should have put the uppercase in the first one, zero through nine, or the underscore, however many of these you have. Um, well, and actually, this is actually simpler than that because really, this could be any character one or more times but then the closed parentheses, <laughs> you know, so we actually can have anything in there, make it easy for us. And that'll be a group. So that will group here to there. Um, and then we don't even care about that open bracket so we can leave it. So this and I'll get rid of these parens for here. This is basically going to be the regular expression with the grouping that we're going to use to identify the line at the top of our function where this group is going to be the return type. This group is going to be the function name. And then these are going to be all of the parameters. All right, so we've gone almost 30 minutes, so I think uh, this is way more than enough for one video. But if you have not seen um, regular expressions, um, I hope this was helpful. In the blog post that goes with this, I will put some links to some regular expression tutorials and things if you want to get started uh, diving into that. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Elisp and start building the function that's going to... Um, um, that that is going to actually uh, that's going to actually make these function headers, um, and uh, we'll have another video, maybe two videos on that, and then we'll move to our next project, and that next project is going to be one that lets you type in emojis easily, like you could type in colon dog colon, and it'll display uh, display the dog emoji, that type of thing, and we'll also look about if I can figure it out how to set that up as an actual Emacs package for installation. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this one, and um, we'll be back soon with the next one.